Hi folks, welcome to day six of the 2019 Christmas Bonanza. Eight videos in eight days, starting on Christmas Day and ending on New Year's Day. So we're back up in my garage workshop, and I've got two new structures from Menards. We've got a strip mall building up on top, and then a Schneider Freight building on the bottom. And we're going to check them both out today on Eric's Trains. All right, so let's start with this one right here. And on the label, it says O-Gage Strip Mall Shopping Center. And over here, we've got the specs. Pre-lit, pre-assembled, and ready to go. Exterior lit by 54 white LED lights. That's pretty cool. Five unique stores with realistic interiors and signage. Accessories include 10 shoppers, a coin-operated horse, that's pretty cool, and of course, Jack the German Shepherd. And it requires a 4.5 volt power source, and they give you the SKU numbers right here if you don't have one. All right, so let's go ahead and crack this thing open. And for today's unboxings, I'm gonna be using my Becker K-Bar BK2. This is a beast of a knife. It can do just about anything you need. It's pretty cool. And by the way, just in case some of you are wondering, I do not get paid to show these knives. <laughs> I am a big knife collector. I've got a very large knife collection, and I just enjoy showing these. I mean, I gotta open the box with something, so why not use some knives from my collection? Now, the BK2 is probably not the best box opener in the world, but I couldn't resist using it in the video. It'd be kind of stupid if the knife makers wanted to pay me money to use their knives in a train video. It'd be cool if they did that, but no, they're not doing that. Anyway, so... All right. Now, I should preface this unboxing by telling you that when this box was on my kitchen table, my cat Chessie knocked it off the table, so it fell about four feet. So hopefully there won't be any damage, but if there is, that's probably why. Now, I've gotten Menards buildings before, and there's been a loose piece or two sometimes. That's okay, but if there's any major damage, we'll know to blame Chessie and not Menards. So there it is, it looks pretty nice. Now. When they package these buildings, they put these staples in the base. And I have found the best way to get these out is to grab a good set of pliers and yank them out. So let me go grab a set of pliers. All right, so hopefully these will be good enough. My really good pliers are downstairs in the train room. Uh, looks like I'm gonna need a screwdriver too. Something to pry these up with. They really pack these things well, but it does take a while to get them unboxed. And there we go. All right, I think I got all the staples out, so let's see. Yep, there we go. And get it out of the base. There we go. And here we are. Wow, look at that. This thing is awesome. And it looks like this thing survived my cat Chessie unscathed. So kudos to Menards on the packing job. Wow, this is really something. I continue to be impressed by the stuff that Menards is putting out. I mean, check out that roof. We've got all this detailing and then we've got these AC units up top. And then check out that front. Five stores, we've got the Chicago Burger Company Grill and Bar, a candy shop with the M&M characters, dollar store, Clearview cabinetry, and then a Whirlpool appliance store. And let me go ahead and zoom in so you can get a better view of what's going on. I mean, this looks great even without the lights. All right, so 
here's the Whirlpool store. And for each store, they've got clear plastic windows and there's a photo backdrop in the store that's set back a bit to give it some depth. It's really cool. Got those two people there. And then we've got the cabinetry store. There's Jack the German Shepherd. He's on a leash this time. Then we've got the dollar store, the candy store. There's that coin operated horse. That's really cool. And then the Chicago Burger Company. Now, if what I just showed you seemed a little dark, I do apologize, but I wanted to save the best for last when we power this thing up and see what it looks like with the lights on. Because as the box said, it has 54 white LEDs. So I really want to see what that looks like. Now, when it comes to power, just like most other Menards buildings, they've really got you covered because there's two power ports for your convenience. You've got one on the back for easy access. And then if you're like me and you're going to install this thing on your layout on a permanent basis, and you want to run the power cord up from underneath, well, they've got a power port coming out the bottom as well. I love that about these Menards buildings. It makes them very versatile. So, without further ado, let's turn this thing around. And here is my 4.5 volt power supply. This is the 5 amp version. They also sell a 1 amp version. The 1 amp version is about seven or eight dollars. The 5 amp version is about 18 dollars. And with the 5 amp version, you can power multiple structures with that power supply if you get the extension kit. So let's go ahead and plug this in. And presto. Wow, look at that. That is absolutely amazing. I mean, let me turn the room lights off so you can see how great this looks. And look at that. That is outstanding. Now what's even more outstanding about this building is the price. Do you know how much this thing sells for? $80. That's right, $80 on the Menards website. You can't beat that anywhere. Now let's check out the second building. On its tag it says O-Gage Schneider Freight Building. And then for the specs we've got pre-lit, pre-assembled, and ready to go. Features an animated forklift that travels in and out. That's awesome. I can't wait to see that. Exterior is lit by over 45 white LED lights. Accessories include four workers, three crates, two pallets, one with a load, two bushes, and of course, Jack the German Shepherd. And just like the other building, it requires a 4.5 volt power supply. So once again, we'll bring out the BK2 and crack this thing open. A lot of people have asked me if I would cut away from myself when I'm opening these boxes. And I keep telling them I can't really do that because it's very difficult. And that's because when I'm filming these videos and I'm unboxing something, I'm basically wrapping myself around the camera. And so it's very hard to use tools like that. And so the only way that works well when I'm wrapped around the camera is to pull the knife toward me. I'm not using a lot of force though, so it's not like I'm going to accidentally stab myself. So It depends on the situation you're in, what you do with a knife or any tool. Alright, so pull that out. Looks pretty good and we've got those staples around it once again. So let's go ahead and get those out. I think I got them all out. Let's find out. 
one back here that wants to be stubborn. Get it out of base. And there we go. <laughs> this thing looks awesome. And while I've got it up like this, and while it's dangling out, you can see that once again, we've got the dual power supply. So we've got one down here, which I'll just tuck back up in here. And then there should be another one somewhere on the outside. Oh, yep, there it is. Under the stairs. Very nice, it's kind of concealed under the stairs. That's very cool. So up front, we've got a crate, a forklift that's supposed to be animated. We'll see in just a moment. We've got a guy with a truck, a couple more crates. There's Jack the German Shepherd. And then we've got a pallet over here. Around the corner, got a really nicely done Schneider sign. Two guys, a set of steps, a door, some windows, a utility box right here. I love little details like this. And then we've got a couple bushes as well. On the back side, we've got three open bays. Got nice safety striping on the edges of the loading docks. There's that side. This roof looks really cool too. You can see it looks like a corrugated metal roof. Very nicely done. All right, now I am just as curious as you guys are to see what this forklift is gonna look like when it comes on. So let's go ahead and power this thing up. And there we go. Wow, look at that. That is awesome. I don't think I've ever seen a Menard structure with animation like this. This is just incredible. And I don't know if you can tell, but they've actually got a figure in the driver's seat of the forklift. Aside from the forklift, the lighting on the building is superb. The loading dock is very well lit. Around this side, the Schneider sign is lit up. And it's the same on the other side as well. And then on the back side, we've got illumination there as well. So once again, another fantastic job by Menards. They've really outdone themselves on this one. Okay, so this building has figures, it's got lighting, it's got animation, it's gotta be expensive. Well, guess again, the price on this building is $90. That's right, $90. I don't know how they do it, but I love it. The last thing I wanted to say about this building is that after running it for about an hour now, I wanted to point out a couple things that might interest you. So, if the building is on a flat surface like it is now, the forklift should work with no issues. However, if for some reason you turn the building on its side or turn it upside down like I've been doing for this review, you may end up shifting the forklift in such a way that it ends up hitting the side of the door when it comes out. So if you move the building around, just make sure that before you power it back on, you make sure the forklift is straightened out and not up against this wall. And again, if you're running it on a flat surface and it's straight like this, you won't have a problem. It only becomes an issue if you turn the building upside down or something like that. The other thing I wanted to point out is that there is no way to easily turn the forklift off if you don't want it to operate. However, let me show you something. Let me turn it off and turn it upside down. So here's the forklift mechanism. And then if we go further down and tilt this thing back a bit and then bring in a flashlight and hopefully this LED flashlight won't cause any refresh rate issues in the video. But if you look back there, you can see a little circuit board and it's got several Molex connectors attached to it. And those Molex connectors go out to wires that go out to the various LEDs and so forth. Well, I'm sure that one of those Molex connectors powers the forklift. So if I was going to disable the forklift, I would simply unplug the Molex connector that powers it. So I'm setting up the closing shot for this video and I figured, well, I might as well show you something. So I've got that one power supply that I've used for both of these buildings and it's the five amp power supply which can power multiple structures. So I have the Menards extension kit. So it comes with a Y connector 
So I'll hook the power cable to the Y connector and then I've got two extension cables. So I'll hook one extension to each part of the Y and now I can power both of these buildings with that one supply. So there's that and there's that. So yeah, I'm giving both of these buildings a big thumbs up. These things are just awesome. And as is typical for Menards, the best part is the price. $80 for the strip mall, $90 for the animated freight building, you can't beat that. So if you want to pick these up, you can get them on the Menards website at www.menards.com. If you'd like to support Eric's Trains, I would greatly appreciate it. That can be done through Patreon at www.patreon.com slash Eric's Trains. And if you'd like to get an Eric's Trains t-shirt or anything else I might be selling, check out the Eric's Trains online store at www.ericstrains.com slash store. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm Eric Siegel, and I'll see you tomorrow for Day 7. Congratulations, you reached the end of the video. You know, so many people never reach the end of anything they're watching these days, which is unfortunate because oftentimes there's really cool stuff at the end, like so many of the Marvel movies in recent years. But for some reason, people on YouTube, they just tune out after about five or six minutes in general. And that's not just my videos, that's all videos. I guess people just have a really short attention span these days, but not you, you persevered, you made it to the end, and so here's your prize. On day eight of the 2019 Christmas Bonanza, I will be doing a live Q&A on YouTube. It'll be about half an hour or an hour long, and I'll take your questions, and we'll run some trains. It should be lots of fun. I'm going to do that on day eight, which will be New Year's Day at 1 p.m. Eastern. So I'll see you there. Now, I'm going to announce this tomorrow so everybody will know eventually, but you found out early because you made it to the end. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm Eric Siegel, and I'll see you tomorrow for day seven.